solo buried Richthofen Easter egg speedrun tutorial. Let's do this. So before the run starts, you're gonna need some resources. You're gonna need some scripts and images to help you out during the run. So the scripts you're gonna need are the timer and your solo mod. The timer is, well, a timer, gives you all the perma perks on the map and a full bank. The solo mod allows you to do the Easter on solo because typically you can only do it with four people in the lobby. Technically this does mean this is an unofficial Easter egg, but the boards on the website are still legit, so take with that what you will. The third script is entirely optional, and it's what we call the BOFA counter. This just counts how many runs it's been since the last time you had both Paralyzer and Time Bomb on the same run. You don't need it, but we like to have it just because we love coping. The next resource is the Lantern Code Cipher. This is absolutely essential to have during the run so you don't get lost and you know exactly what code you need to put in your signs. This may look very confusing at the moment, but I will cover it when we get there. There's a way to make it very easy to read. The next resource are the maze layouts. You're going to need these at the very end of your run to know exactly where the switches are. I won't cover these right now, but when we get there I will show you them and you will have to remember them so you don't get lost. All of these resources will be found in my Discord, which will be linked in the description. You can join it if you have any questions to ask me about stuff I may have not covered in the video, and all of the resources are located there, so go ahead and join. One more thing I should explain before continuing is that this run is actually separated into two different routes. These routes are playing for world record and just playing for fun. There are many differences between these two routes that I'll show over the course of the run, but they're very important to know because there's definitely a difference between the two. We're almost getting into the run, but I have to explain one very important thing first. So I'm just going to give a basic breakdown of the movement, because if I go too in-depth, this is just going to take too long. So the biggest movement thing in this game is strafe jumping, which looks like this. And in order to strafe jump, you're going to want to sprint, jump, and look into the direction you want to go in while holding your directional key and W's. The bank strafe is, which is what this is, requires you to strafe left like this, just like that. Another big thing is that your FPS uh, impacts your movement a lot. So if I change this to unlimited, your strafes are going to be slowed because of your airspeed, which is also being slowed. So you're usually not going to be able to make that jump, right? So now that we're done talking about movement, it's time to get into what the start of the run will look like. So the very first thing you're going to do is look at what spawn you get right off the start. If you get a spawn very far back, you might as well just reset because you're losing too much time at that point. From there, you're just going to follow exactly what I do in this route. You're going to buy Quick Revive for some extra points from the Cashback Perma Perk, and also a better chance at Vulture's Aid later on. Then hit the Bank Strafe and grab some points from the Bank. Optimally, you probably want as much as I got in this game, but sometimes I like to grab more just to be safe. Then grab this part in the corner, grab the Galvanuckle wall by, and run all the way to the general store. This part's pretty straightforward. You're just going to be hitting the box and hoping you get what you need from it, but there's also a few things you need to be doing at the same time. You're going to want to pay attention to what drop you get at the start here. I'm not going to explain exactly how drops work in this game because it's pretty complicated. The short explanation is, you're guaranteed to get a drop once you hit a certain amount of points. If you're playing for record, this drop must absolutely not be a max ammo. If it is, you'll have to reset. You're going to need a max later in the run, and you can't get two of the same drop in a row. I'll explain it more when we get there. You also want to pay attention to how many zombies you've killed. You want to get the round as low as possible, but also not end the round. Other than that, all you're doing here is hitting the box. If you get the paralyzer from the box first, do what I do here. Place the part on the max as buildable. This part will also count for the Richthof and buildable, so you do not have to place this part over there. Now that you have both items from the box, this is where the routes will begin to separate. So if you're not playing for world record, you can follow exactly what I do here and you would have no issue. If you are playing for world record, you would completely skip getting Leroy out of his cage. After getting the things from the box, you would just come up here straight to the barn and pick up the part. After you place the part, head right into the mansion. Before you head into the mansion, make sure you grab the MP5 because it has the fastest movement speed. On your first time going through here, just go as fast as you possibly can. Try to avoid getting any money stolen from the witches, and don't kill any if you don't really have to. 
So now you're going to charge the first orb with the paralyzer. A cool trick with the paralyzer is that if you constantly swap your weapons back and forth, you can actually save some extra charge at the cost of nothing really. You don't lose any speed from your paralyzer and you gain more energy from it, so do that every time you charge an orb. Now you're going to exit the mansion and turn on the power switch. This is where the route will split up again. If you're not playing for world record, just do exactly what I do here. If you are playing for record, after you charge the orb, you can jump down and buy meal kick. Then you can run around and go back to the guillotine to place the crystal. This will give you even extra odds of getting Vulture's Aid from the perk bottle that the witches drop. This is the difference between the world record route and the just for fun route. The world record route plays for some really crazy RNG. While the regular route, you don't really have to get vultures from the witches. You can just buy it yourself, which is why we let Leroy out like this. If you're just playing for fun, do what I do here. But if you're not, and if you're playing for world record, you would not go into the saloon because obviously Leroy has not been let out. Once this orb is charged, you're going to try to end your round here, but it is not needed. It's not entirely necessary. The very latest you can end your round 1 is right before you leave the mansion for the second time. Round 2 gives us enough zombies later on. So if you're playing for record and at this point do get vultures from the witches, you would be completely ignoring Leroy and just going straight to charge the orb instead of doing any of this that you're seeing. Charging this last orb is going to spawn a lantern that we need witch kills to fill. Once this last orb is charged, you're going to hold the nade out and throw it at the fourth tick as soon as the lantern pops up. Obviously, if you had vultures already, you wouldn't be doing this, but if you're not playing for record, follow me. Once you have the lantern, you're going to pick it up and enter the witch's house. Now this part does need a little bit of explanation. If this second witch spawns right there, you're going to melee it and keep going on like I do. If it instead spawns in that hallway, then you're going to play this a little differently. After killing that second witch in the room, you're going to stand there and wait for the third witch to come around. After those are dead, go on, kill the next witch, and go through the second part of the mansion. Now sometimes this first witch will spawn very oddly like you see right here. If it spawns there, do exactly what I do. Stand back and wait for the seventh one to spawn in. It's really important that after you kill your ninth, you wait on the stairs for your tenth to spawn in, and if you don't, it's going to spawn behind you and lose you quite a bit of time. Now this is the part where you're going to need your lantern coat, which I will show right now. So the way I decipher this is actually pretty simple. It just mainly consists of what you see on the first few letters, I guess, of the code. As you can see for D, the start of it kind of looks like a U. And for L, the start of it kind of looks like a bit of a backward C. Now for C, if you look at maybe the first five, you'll notice that double R that's sort of at the end of it. If it doesn't have that double R and it is that L shape, it will be bone. And if it's that forwards looking L, then that is G. It might take a while to figure these out. It took a while for me to figure them out, but yeah, pretty simple. Now you're going to need to know where all the signs are. So starting from the saloon, the first one here will always be D. And then next, it will always be L. After L will always be C, which is a bit across the way over here. And after C will be G, which is quite a ways away, all the way basically across the entire mine. And the final one is B, which is pretty close by next to Speed Cola. Now this part is very important. You have to make sure you end your sign code on C, G, or B, because these are the best locations for the first wisp spawn. Now after the first wisp spawns, there's always going to be a 50-50 on where it will go next. If you end on G or B, it will always either go next to the Speed Cola machine like you saw here, or it will go next to the bridge by G, like here. Now if you end your sign on B or G, your wisp will always take this exact route until the general store wisp. Now after this wisp, your wisp will either go in the bank or up here by the power switch. The bank wisp loses you maybe 10 or 15 seconds. It's not good. We don't like it. Now once your wisp goes up to the guillotine, you're just going to want to hold your interact button and place a time bomb on it. This is kind of the slow part of the run. We need 5 zombies to show up and kill them when their arms get blue and glowy. Spawns here can entirely make or break your run. After you get 5 kills, stand as close as you can to the guillotine and use your time bomb. Now we're going to be searching for bodies around the map. 
You can search each body you find, and you have to find a switch from one of them. Because of a bug, you only have to search three bodies for it to count. On your third one, you'll always get the switch. Sometimes a fourth body just won't spawn, so the solo mod has a fix for that. Now real quick, I'm going to show you where all the bodies can spawn so you don't get lost or end up missing one of them and not getting the switch. So right off the bat, there's going to be three that spawn practically right next to the guillotine, right along this wall. There's one that can spawn here by the candy store, one that can spawn here by this hill. There's one back here in this corner that I'll show you how to get to later. There's one right here resting against this wall. There will be one right here next to Leroy's cell. And there will be one right here next to the mystery box. Across this wall, the next body will be right here next to the candy store. There's one right here next to this arrow. There can be a body over here next to this globe. And there can be a body in the vulture's aid room, which if you haven't opened up yet, you can't get to. There's also one body next to a rock at the witch's house, which I didn't show here, but it's there. Now, once you're going to find your switch, you're really going to want to start trying to build up your points. This is because of what I explained earlier, with how once you reach a certain amount of points, you're guaranteed to get a power-up. If you're playing for world record, this power-up absolutely needs to be a max ammo. This is why you can't get one at the start of the game, because of the way your drop cycle works, you can't get two of the same power-up in the same cycle. In order to get that same power-up again, you'd have to go through every other power-up, like nuke, carpenter, insta-kill, and double points, in order to get another max. So now that you have a switch and enough points, you're just gonna wait till you exit round infinity. Fair warning that any zombies that were around you will still be around you as soon as you come back. Once you're back, place the switch and kill a zombie to see your drop. Like I said, if you don't get a max here for record, you're gonna have to reset. But if you're not playing for record, keep going. Now, if you got a max, you're gonna place a time bomb right next to the fountain. This is so that if you get switches on your first try, you can use your time bomb and teleport all the way back. So now that we're entering the maze, it's time for me to explain how switches work. At first, it seems very complicated, but once you figure it out, it's actually pretty simple. So there's four switches in the maze, and you have to flip them in the correct combination. On your first time going through the maze, you will never know what the combination is. For world record, we literally just guess. We flip every switch we get close to and hope that we get them right. This is what we refer to as the 1 in 24, because there's 24 combinations and you have to get it right first try. That is, if you're playing for world record. If you're not playing for world record, you can flip the first four switches, and if you get any of them in the correct order, they will spark. So for instance, if you flip blue, green, red, yellow, and red sparks, then red will always be your third one, but you, since yellow didn't spark, it will not be your last one. Then you would keep flipping these switches until two or more spark, then at that point, you'd know which ones you need to put in. Once all four of your switches are correct, this is where you would use a time bomb if you had a max earlier. If you didn't get a max, you just run back through the mansion and go to the fountain. Now it's time for the very last step of the easter egg, which is sharpshooter. And this is actually pretty easy with this mod on. Because of the way the mod works, you're actually able to shoot some extra targets that spawn outside of the area that you're in. So instead of having to shoot the candy store ones exclusively, you can also shoot some ones next to the box, and turn around and shoot some of the ones next to the windows and the mansion. Even in this gameplay here, you'll be seeing me shoot some of the ones outside of my area. Once all the targets are shot and they stop appearing, that's it. Easter egg's done. You have now completed a run of the Buried Easter Egg speedrun. Yes! Let's go!